आज इस लेक्चर के अंदर हम ए क्यू बी एग्जामिनेशन अप्रैल मई 2017 क्लास टेन का पेपर वन सॉल्व करेंगे सो so, चलते हैं सबसे पहले क्वेश्चन की तरफ सो so, सबसे पहले हमारे पास क्वेश्चन मौजूद है फ्रॉम आर चैप्टर नंबर टेन सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन एंड वेव्स सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन विच ऑल दी फॉलोइंग depict the appropriate change in wavelength and speed of the wave when they pass from deep to shallow region of the water so as we know that the process uh, that is in question number 1 is refraction of water waves and in the process of refraction water waves may travel from deep region to shallow region or the water waves can move from a shallow region of the water to deep region in these two type of bending or these two type of uh, in these two cases of refraction water waves in this case bends towards the normal towards normal and in this case it is away from normal while for the characteristics f remain same for both cases and from deep to shallow region velocity and wavelength both decreases while in the case of shallow to deep region velocity and wavelength both increases so the correct option in this first uh, question is option a velocity will decrease while the wavelength of the wave also decreases so let's come to the next question that is question number 2 which of the following characteristics of the sound depends upon frequency so as we have studied in the chapter number 11 sound so we have studied different characteristics of sound among way there was a, a loudness of the sound then we have the uh, pitch of the sound and the quality of the sound so as we know that the loudness of the sound depends further on uh, certain other factors or uh, amplitude of the wave while the frequency the characteristics that depends on the frequency is known as pitch and pitch means the characteristics of sound that differentiate between a shrill and grave sound for shrill sound it has high frequency while the grave sound have low frequency similarly high frequency or shrill sound is known as high pitch while the grave sound with the low frequency is known as low pitch so the correct talk option in this question we have is question option number a pitch let's come to the other question that is question number 3 from our chapter number 10 simple harmonic motion and wave and this question we have the frequency of the wave as 3 hertz and the velocity of the wave we have to calculate so we know that v is equals to lambda f and we are given with the frequency while in this diagram we have around four waves this is first wave second third and fourth the length of four wave is 60 cm so we have to find out the length of one wave that is equals to lambda so in the, from this given diagram we can calculate this uh, wave length by dividing the length of four waves to, to with four so we will get 15 cm so wavelength is 15 and our frequency is 3 so we don't need to convert this centimeter into meter because we all the option we have the unit in centimeters per second so 15 into 3 we will go, we will get the 45 cm per second so the correct option we have got is option d 45 meters per second so let's move to another question that is question number 4 and in this question um uh, 
sound wave is a mechanical wave so this question we have got is from our chapter number 11 sound a sound wave we know that it is a mechanical wave and this means that they cannot transport energy through vacuum so the correct option we have for question number four is option d because sound wave is a mechanical wave and mechanical waves are those that needs medium for their propagation. Without the presence of medium, these type of waves cannot transport energy. So the correct option we have is option D. Question number five, that is from our next chapter, that is chapter number 12, geometrical optics. The purpose of using a convex lens. We use convex lens in astronomical telescope and uh, the main function of this uh, convex lens uh, to use this convex lens is uh, that we need to focus a very far object. So telescope ke andar jab hum use karte hain to hamara purpose hamara jo use hai to wo kuch is tarah se hota hai ki hame bahut far objects ko bahut distant object ko focus karna hota hai so uh, the correct option we have got is the converged light rays from the distinct object kuch bahut dur place jo objects hain unko focus karna hota hai taki hum use so the correct option for question number five is option D. So quickly let's move to another question that is question number six. And uh, this question is again from our same chapter that is chapter number 12, geometrical optics. Which of the following defect in vision occurs if the eyeball increases? So as we have studied two basic uh, uh, defects in our eye that are long sighted eye and short sighted eye. Among those uh, defects, one is in which uh, a person cannot see the distinct object while in the other person cannot see the near object. And we have uh, discussed the uh, different uh, cause uh, that form this uh, two types of defects among those in one of the defect in which the eyeball increases and due to this eyeball increases the image is fo focused in front of the retina. Due to the increased eyeball or increased aperture of the eyeball images formed in front of the retina and that disease is known as short sightedness or short sighted eye. So the correct option we have is option three for this question number six. So let's move to question number seven and this question is again from our chapter number 12 geometrical optics. In this question, a defect and its correction is given for a human eye. So this is the defect in which image is formed behind the retina. And the causes for these is such that uh, the eye lens is too thin and the aperture of the eyeball is too small. So in this case, we need to convert this point on the retina as shown in the next diagram. So for this, we have used this lens and as we know that this lens is a convex lens. And this defect is known as long sighted eye. So in this long sighted eye images from behind the retina due to thin lens and the um, Aperture of the eyeball is too small and for this correction, we need a convex lens. So correct option we have got is option A. Let's move to another question that is question number eight. And this is from the same chapter, chapter number 12. In the given diagram, the angle X is known as uh, rays uh, moving from glass or we can say the dense medium into the air that is the rare medium. 
and uh, this is our incident ray and this is our refracted ray and as we can see the angle of uh, refracted ray with our normal is 90 degree so whenever our refracted ray becomes perpendicular to the normal then in that case the angle i will be known as critical angle so the correct option for this question is option b that is critical angle let's come to question number nine and this question number nine is from our next chapter that is chapter number 13 electrostatics we have two capacitors each of 8 microfarad and they both are connected in parallel. We have to find the effective capacitance of that uh, combination. So as we know that for effective capacitance connected in parallel, we have the simple formula where we can where we add all the capacitors that are connected in series. So this is the formula for the parallel combination and we just need to add up both those uh, two capacitors in which we will get 8 plus 8 that is 16 microfarad. So the correct option is option D. Let's come to the other question, question number 10. And in this question, it is from our chapter number 14, current and electricity. We have three resistor of six ohms that all are connected in series combination. And we have to find the effective resistance of the circuit. So the formula for the series combination of resistance is equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So the head is the formula. So we just need to add up these three resistors that are 6 ohms, 6 ohms and 6 ohms. So the total we will have 18 ohms of resistance. So the correct option for this question we have is option D that is 18 ohms. So next we have question number 11 and question number 12. So this question number 11 is from our chapter, uh, same chapter that is chapter number 14, current and electricity. So if the current of 20 ampere passes through the live wire, then the current through the neutral wire will be. So as we know that we have two, uh, three wires in the electrical circuits that are live wire, neutral wire and the earth wire. We have studied the function of these wires in which live uh, main function of the live wire is to conduct uh, electricity from the main power source and uh, the neutral wire, the function of it is to give the uh, backward path or the uh, path to uh, move again towards the power station. And uh, for the neutral, uh, for earth wire, we, we use this uh, wire or this uh, earth wire for the safety purpose. So if uh, the 20 ampere current is moving through the live wire, then the same amount of current will also move to the, uh, through the neutral wire back to the power station. And uh, the correct option is option C. Next we have is question number 12, that is from our same chapter 14, current and electricity. So we are given with the power of a bulb that is 200 watts and it is it glows for around 1000 hours and the energy consumed in kilowatt hour will be. So we know that the formula of energy is equals to power multiplied by time and if we need to calculate the energy in kilowatt hour, so this means that power should be in uh, watts, kilowatt and our time should be in hours. So uh, for power, we need to convert this into kilowatt. This will become 200 divided by 1000. So here we have a power in kilowatt and the time in hours we have is 1000 uh, hours. So after cancellation, cancellation, we will get 200 kilowatt hours of energy that uh, 200 watt bulb will use in those 
1000 uh, hours so the correct option we have is option a okay so next we have question number 14 and uh, 13 and 14 from our next chapter that is chapter number 15 electromagnetism so if the speed of the conductor through the magnetic field increases agar hum conductor ki speed ko increase kar dete hain in a magnetic field so what will be the effect on the electromotive force we know that according to faraday law whenever a conductor is moved in a, uh, inside a magnetic field and whenever there is a change of magnetic flux through the conductor so this produces an emf through the conductor and the magnitude of this uh, magnitude of this induced emf is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field as well as the speed of the conductor so if we increase the speed of the conductor then simultaneously the magnet electromotive force will increase in that conductor so the correct option for a question number 13 is option a next we have question number 14 if a conductor is placed in a stationary and non varying magnetic field for this is the main uh, point in this question that the, we have the magnetic field that is stationary and non varying this means that there will be no change of magnetic flux when there is no change in magnetic flux there will be no uh, electromagnetic induction and there will be no electromotive force so jab magnetic field ka change na ho to chahe hum conductor ko uh, conductor stationary ho aur um, magnetic flux ka jo change hai wo produce nahi ho raha ho conductor par so there will be no electromotive force and no induction so in this case electromotive force will be equal to zero so correct option we have is option c let's move to another question that will be our question number 15 and 16. so this 15 is again from our same chapter that is chapter number 15 electromagnetism and this question is also same from chapter 15 electromagnetism if the current through the coil of an electromagnetic reverse electromagnet reverses so what will happen to the magnetic field so as we know that uh, magnetic field is produced due to the flow of current through the conductor so this magnetic field is directly proportional to the amount of current flowing through that conductor while the distance from the conductor jitna zyada amount of current flow hoga magnetic field utni zyada strong hogi or saath saath conductor ke jitna kareeb hum major karenge magnetic field ko it will be stronger simultaneously if it reverses the direction of current in the conductor then the direction of magnetic field will also reverses so the correct option for this question is option c question number 16 Question number 16 that is from our same chapter 15 electromagnetism and AC generator is an example of what or is question ke andar hume jo hai wo is uh, AC generator ka working principle poocha gaya hai so AC generator ka jo main working principle hai jo main process that is uh, occurring in that uh, generator is uh, option D that is electromagnetic induction. Okay, so let's move to question number 17 and 18 that are from, well, 17 is from our next chapter that is electronics chapter number 16. Okay, so in electronics, the characteristics of an analog quantity. So analog quantity ko actually hume ya define karna hai ke which of the character uh, following option correctly describe the characteristic of analog quantity so if you recall the definition of the the, the analog quantity is it is such that it has or is the quantity that changes 
continuously with respect to time or a given range of values. So correct option we have got for this question is the analog quantities has a continuous set of values over a given range or over a given period of time. So correct option we have is option C. So let's come to question number 18. And in question number 18, this is a question from our chapter number 17, information and communication technology. So in this question, we are asked about the basic operation that are performed by a computer. So the, here we have three options and which of the, which of these options are the or uh, these are the functions that are performed by a computer that word processing obviously this is done by a computers not automatic operations that are uh, we can say the we have boolean operations or boolean algebra that is applied in the computer or that is the work performed by the computer Similarly, monitoring and the controlling and processing of the data is also a basic, basic task that is performed by the computer. So all of these given options that are the uh, function of a computer. So we have got a correct answer that is option D that all these given processes or jobs are performed by a computer. Next, we have question number 19 and in question number 19, this is again our question from our chapter number 17. That is information and communication technology to collect information for a special purpose and store it in a computer. So we have collect some information. We have stored it in the computer and for um, the, for our need, uh, we have retrieved that data or that information. So we have to define this. This all functions are known as what? So the correct option for this question is option A that is data managing. And what is meant by data managing? That we collect information, we store it in a computer and we retrieve whenever we are needed. So the correct option for question number 19 is option A. Next, we have question number 17 from our uh, question number 20 from our chapter 17 information and communication technology. Which of the following is the main use of word processing? So among those four options, uh, we have an obvious answer that is the main use of word processing is the typing. So the correct option for this question number 20 is option A. Let's move to the question, question number 21. And these all the questions will be are from our chapter number 18 radioactivity the ionizing power of gamma rays so we have studied the what is ionizing power whenever these radioactive radiation passes through any medium or any matter they utilize their energy to break down the atoms of that medium this ability is known as ionization or ionizing power so the relation between the ionization of alpha, beta and gamma, alpha radiation are the most ionizing while the gamma radiations are the least ionizing. This means that the gamma radiation will be, will have the least ionization than alpha and beta. So correct option, we will have less than both alpha and beta. So option C we have is the correct answer for this question number 21. Okay, so let's move to other question that is question number 22 with the, that is from the same chapter number 18. The given equation shows the disintegration of a radium 226 into radium 222 with a radioactive emission obviously so the radioactive emission represented by this equation in which we have to identify this uh, emitted particle X. So as we can see that the atomic mass of 226 has reduced to 222 that is decreased by 4. 
Similarly, the atomic number that is 88 that is reduced by 2 and becomes 86. So here we will have 2 and in mass we will have 4. So the atomic number 82 and mass 4, we uh, sorry, atomic number 2 and mass 4 is of uh, helium nuclei or we can say that is our alpha particle. So the correct option is an alpha particle is emitted. So the option B is the correct answer. Let's move to another question that is 23 and 24. So this is our from chapter number 18, radioactivity. If a nucleus of an element has the atomic mass A is equal to 24, then it will have 11 protons and 13 neutrons. So we know that atomic mass in which it is equal to the number of protons and neutrons. So 11 plus 13 will be equal to 24. 11 proton and 13 neutron is not possible because it will not be a case of the neutral atom because it has great, uh, greater number of electrons. Similarly, like 11 protons and uh, 11 electrons and 14 proton, it will again become a charge. Similarly, 11 electron, 11 proton, it will also become charge. So for question number 23, we have the correct option that is option A. Next uh, question number 24 from the same chapter that is 18, the reaction that occurs on the surface of the sun. Sun is giving us the light energy and heat energy for the several years and the main source of the energy in the sun is a radioactive or, or nuclear reaction that is fusion of hydrogen into helium. So this process is occurring on the surface or the core of the earth for the several hundred years and the sun is giving a light energy and a heat energy through this same reaction. So question number 24, the correct option we have is option A. Next we have the last question that is question number 25 and in this question, this is again from our chapter number 18 radioactivity large amount of energy is released in a controlled form which of the following reaction in which large amount of energy is released and we can control that amount of energy so this reaction is the fission reaction that is known as controlled fission chain reaction in which we can produce the energy in a controlled way to uh, convert that into electrical energy so correct option for 20, question number 25 is option B.